Thanks for clicking on my video. Before we get started, please click the subscribe button so that you can get more great content such as this one. Thanks. Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. I'm your host, Tony Coleman, and today I'm gonna give you a uh, quick overview of a really helpful tool built into Windows. I wanna say it started in Windows 7. It might've been in Vista, but I remember being introduced to it back when Windows 7 was still popular. Um, this tool is very helpful for those who troubleshoot software, um, or if you just want to document how, how you've done something, um, it's basically called steps recorder. It used to be called process steps recorder. I believe it was, but, uh, you can find it by just going to your search function at the bottom and hit, uh, type in the letters P's and Paul, S as in Sam, R as in Richard enter and it just pulls up this little bit of utility now the great thing about this tool is that say you're using an app and you keep getting an error code every time you do a specific process it keeps giving you errors and you try to get a hold of support and support's like all right well what did you do and you, you may just generically say i tried opening the video well, they may say, well, how did you go about it? What's what's your steps? Walk me through it. And so you're going to have to type out all your steps. Usually you forget a few things or where you don't know the proper terminology, like is it the taskbar? Is is it the menu? Um, is it in, in an actual uh, uh, pop-up box? Is, is it in the foreground, background? Are you minimizing anything? Um, are you using keyboard commands to get there? Are you using the mouse? Are you right clicking, left clicking, all this stuff. And it becomes very tedious to try to document every single step you took to get there. And so when you're in tech support, it's very frustrating to not be able to see what they're doing because you can't always log in and watch them. And you will also find that not everybody does the same job the same way. And so what they're clicking on and how they're clicking on it can make a huge difference. Um, I used to work for a bank in, in IT and there were so many times that the software they used from their vendor, which is a very specialized piece of software that only they provide. And most people aren't ever gonna see in their life unless they work for a bank that uses their software. And there could be like, 16 different ways to accomplish the exact same end goal but there may only be one or two proper ways to do it and so the way you end up doing it because it makes sense for you to do it may end up causing an error it may be a bug in their system because nobody else does it that way so doing this helps because what you're going to see is every click i do everything i type is going to be documented for you in a very handy way so here we got the steps recorder. Very simple, doesn't have a lot of features, shouldn't be very confusing. You just start record and it's waiting for me to take action. Now in this case, I'll just open up a web browser. Here it is, comes to the default page. And now I can type in anywhere. So let's just go to Yahoo. Type it in. I can do a search. How about today's weather? There it is. So far, I'm only typing. Scroll. I can click on this link. Weather.com. Shows me the weather. I could click anywhere on here and it could still continue it. Let's do uh, some different ones. Let's, let's do Schenectady, in New York. One, two, three, four, five, because it's an easy zip code to know. No, that's not where I'm at, but uh, it should pull up something for that. Well, it's start. It's trying to do mine. Not sure why the search wasn't working on there. Maybe it just didn't like it. But yeah, here let's just uh, let's do Moscow, Russia, since they're uh, in the news right now. Weather forecast in Russia. There you go. So we're still recording. Now maybe I want to close that. Close. And maybe I'm still uh, wanting to do some other stuff. So let's just open up 
Well, here, let's open up Epic Games. So here it's showing some different games I have on my account. And then maybe I say, eh, I don't want to go through there. Close it out. And then maybe we can just open up Control Panel. Look at different things, power options. There we go. Now say we're done, and that was all the process we want to do. And say there was an error that came up on the on the screen somewhere, and that that was as far as we needed to get to show tech support. So you can just hit stop record. It'll pull up some options here. You can read through them, but uh, I usually want to look at review recorded steps before I do anything. Now uh, you can scroll through here. It's got different options here telling you what you've done. But re I review the recorded steps and maximize. So here it's saying, step one, user click on Microsoft Edge button. So now whoever's reading through this report is going to know I use the Microsoft Edge button. Not just went to any, any other web browser. It said Microsoft Edge. They know that I'm in Edge. This said I left clicked in the address in search bar to edit my search bar. Yes, I clicked in there to type in a web address. So now they know that I didn't follow a link somewhere. I actually typed in something in the search bar. Then it says user keyboard input on new tab, profile one, Microsoft Edge window and blah, blah, blah. And it shows me typing in words and letters. Next, the user clicked on Microsoft Edge region in Yahoo Mail. Basically, I went to Yahoo Mail or in that area and I clicked in this area in the profile. User keyboard input on Yahoo Mail weather or politics. And basically, it's showing that I typed in right there. And it's showing me recording on the second screen. Now it says the user mouse wheel down in today's weather. So it showed me scrolling back and forth on the weather here while I was chatting with you. Then it said I clicked on today's weather Yahoo results in Edge. So basically that's when I clicked on this link right here. So as you can see, it has all these steps and it shows what I was doing and what, and what the result was when I clicked on it. Like here, it showed that even the privacy statement came up. So went through all these, and then after I clicked on the Moscow weather, it showed that weather. Then it shows me closing out, closing that tab. It shows me closing Microsoft Edge. Then it shows me clicking on Epic Games Launcher. And as you can see, it shows the screen as I saw it. Then it shows me using the, the wheel up on Epic Games Launcher, meaning I was scrolling. Left click on the icon here. That's what this is saying. I clicked on the X to exit out. And then it shows me clicking on control panel. So now it's got the process showing control panel. And as you can see, it's going through each of these options showing that I did click on them. And that's really helpful because here you've got all the steps outlined and it gives the details that they need. User elements, what the, what the program was called, like Microsoft Edge, EXE, and, and it's given us the details that are needed. Now, the beauty of this is after you've done all this, you can even type in additional comments um, in your email when you send this. But when you're done here, you can save it. You'll save it in a zip file and we can just, I'll just type PSR because that's what the app was where we could name it. Test record and I'll put it on my desktop and then I can just close this out so here you got the zip file and we'll open it which open off my screen move it over here so you can see and as you can see it's an HTML file so it's something that everyone should be able to view not some funky unknown player uh, format and they will open it. You can choose which app. So we'll say Edge. And it's pulling it up. Now here it's got the recorded steps. They have the steps here. 
They can view them. And in this case, it did not save the screenshots. Should have, but I'm not seeing. see what it does maybe it's not liking that browser so let me try opening another way Download Edge, we have it. So here we go. Opening it in Internet Explorer, which should be on every version of Windows. You can now see the screenshots. For whatever reason, Edge wasn't doing it. I'm sure there's a way to activate it, but um, you have the screenshots in it. So it does work. They Anybody can open this up. You can send this to tech support, show them every step that you did, and they should be able to follow along and replicate the issue. Now, the reason this is very handy is because they uh, aren't aware that there's a problem. This helps them identify, is this something exclusive to just you or is this everyone? If they can follow your steps on their system and they get the exact same error, they know that it's something that they need to change on their side. They can uh, send that same file to their development department um, or to just regular IT and then they could figure out, is this like a server needing rebooted? Um, is it an update that needs to be done? Was there updates that went on last night that broke something? Um, so very helpful. And so if you can show them that, um, then it saves you a lot of time trying to type out every step you did, uh, trying to articulate the proper steps. And it also shows the, the support you're working with that you have half a brain, you're not imagining things, and that maybe you do know what you're talking about. Uh, a lot of times support, even though they're trained to be nice to you, a lot of times they think you're an idiot. So th this is a great way to show step-by-step -step, um, instructions on what you did that created the problem that you ran into. And then they can easily just forward that on to whoever it is that fixes it. Uh, they will be able to see everything that was on your screen. They can see um, exactly what you're clicking on or what it looked like. They, they can tell... Are you in Brave Browser? Are you in Internet Explorer? Because, you know, all your icons are different. If they're telling you use Chrome and you're using Firefox, well, not everybody knows the difference between Chrome and Firefox because not everybody's techie. <coughs> and so this would be a great way of them saying, oh, you're not even in the web browser. You're in Windows Explorer in the File Explorer. That's, that's not Internet Explorer, you know. So um, some people get confused with that. And, and, and it's probably been one of the best tools that I found when I was working support for IT, when I was help desk, when I, when I was a network engineer, because you can use this to document your own process. Like if you're wanting to set up a server, you can record the entire process, you setting up the server, and then submit that to your documentation, and then other people can follow along. They may not like how you've done it, but at least every step you took, every click you did, every change you made is documented that way and then you can even look back on it and then type out your own steps you can you can even um look at the pictures here and save them if you want copy right there save picture as right there and then by doing that you you can make your own documentation and remember every step that you did and you didn't have to type it as you did it so really helpful tool um, I'm surprised that I don't see it talked about very often. I rarely, rarely see anyone ever reference this tool. It's built into pretty much every copy of Windows, so uh, at least since Windows 7. And uh, it, it saved me so much time and headache, especially dealing with vendors that have proprietary software that isn't common outside a specific industry. So if you got any questions about it, feel free to post those in the comments below. Uh, if you got any other suggestions, maybe alternatives that you think works better, that's also free or even paid, 
um, let me know about them because I'd be more than happy to look at some of those tools. Um, but make sure you share this with everybody you know. Um, like the, the video and share it and hit that bell button so that you get notifications for additional great content like this. So that's all I got for you today. Until next time, have a good one.